British photographers, public relations okay them up at Fighter Command headquarters. Are those planes back from the 17th? Not yet. They ran into some trouble over Bremen. They love trouble. They get fat on it. Okay, knucklehead, don't let any Germans in here. Next time he calls me knucklehead, I'm not going to let him in. No, oh, he'd love that. It's about time you gentlemen got around to photographing my outfit. You seem pretty proud of your group, Sergeant. Proud? Take guys like our CO, Colonel Brickley and Major Harden. They were born with propellers in their mouths. Sounds as if he's got a propeller in his mouth, too. Of course, it takes a good man on the ground to keep that bunch together. What I go through to keep them flying, doling this, doling that, night and day. Sometimes I think if I wasn't here, the outfit would fold. Okay, gentlemen, this is it. Hang around till you spot them and then go down the runway for your pictures. Thank you very much for your help, Sergeant. How about taking a picture of me for your paper? Right, now, All right. You know, tell them how I run the outfit. Thanks. If anybody bothers you, you just tell them that Sergeant Dolan okay you. Where's that crack outfit of ours? They were due here 20 minutes ago. If they were due here 20 minutes ago, they'll be here 20 minutes ago. Hey, Jughead, ain't you got that auxiliary tank filled yet? There's 110 gallons of gas in it. Why don't you help me out? I don't want any part of those tanks. If I was flying, I'd drop them. General Gilbert says don't drop them. Yeah, but he ain't flying. I'd hate to have a German chasing me around the sky with 110 gallons of gas on my belly. You know that Swiss watch you sold me last week? Yeah. It was made in Czechoslovakia. Can I help it? You know how those Swedes get around. At ease. Be careful, Wilbur. Whenever there's any officers around, you don't have to salute me. Oh, thank you, sir. Any calls? Sybil's mother called three times. What'd you tell her? I told her that the general sent you to Italy. Good, you're using your head. You're gonna get these stripes and a decoration. A decoration? The Iron Cross. Very few Americans got them. Oh, I know. They're hard to get. Listen, clean up the Jeep and throw a couple of pieces of soap in the back seat. You're not giving that soap away, are you? No, I just let them wash their face with it and I take it back. Let a cat out. Now, wait a minute. I've only got one cat left, and it's got a white paw. Use the shoe polish. Blacken it up. Well, you're going to get in trouble. You let me worry about that. I'm running this outfit. That's right. I forgot. Oh, the cat. The 24 minutes late, sir. I know, Dolan. Washing the car won't help. I brought those photographers out with me. Do you want me to drive them back when they're through? No. Put that sign up. Another sign? If these signs get any lower, only midgets and dogs will be able to read them. Get a load of that one. A man who wants to get married hasn't got his mind on fighting till he meets his wife's family. That'll do, Sergeant. Clean the board and post the weather report. Dolan, look who's here. What, again? If the pilots find that black cat here, they'll have you in the guardhouse. Where'd you take him last time? Halfway to the village. Well, this time, take him beyond the village. Yes, sir. Any particular village? Any place. Yes, sir. Hey, yeah, Wilbur. Bye, pussy. Pussy, you go that way. I'm going this way. Hello, Hayes. 
stack. This is Yardstick. We have two cripples with us. Have the ambulance and crash truck stand by. The group will circle until you clear us to come in. Come on in. Land to the west if you can. Come on in. Land to the west if you can. Major Harden. We don't know. Dudley and Clement got it. We had it today. It's Harden, I'm worried. Relax, Stu. He may be okay. We are a team. I'm supposed to fly his wing. You're not supposed to be a mind reader with two M.E.s on your neck. How could you know he was going down on the deck after those Jerry? Where's Brickley? Control tower. Come on, the man picked him up. All right, go ahead. Hey, any of you fellas here from Ed on the RT after he hit the deck? No, we're going over to the tower. They might have. feet himself. I don't know how he finds out, but every time one of his golden rules is broken, he's here. Comes in like a hungry beagle and twice as ugly. I bet if Ed doesn't come back, Gibbet will kill himself just so he can go on haunting him. Captain Hamilton. General Gilbert. Captain Chappelle, Lieutenant Atkins. What happened to Harden? Missing, sir. Not shot down, I hope. We don't know, sir. We appreciate your concern, General. You're his wingman? Yes, sir. Captain Hamilton was under attack himself, sir. Yeah, the bombers? Yes, sir. But Harden went down to the deck again, is that it? Lieutenant Dudley was getting shot to pieces by three 109s. Major Harden went down to help him. Sir, Colonel Brickley's in the control tower trying to get some trace of Harden. Would you uh, excuse us, General? We'll make a full report of interrogation. You'll be there, of course. I'll be there. Go ahead. Z-Cliff 88, have you heard any call from Corber Red Leader? Over. Z-Cliff 88 to Haystack. Negative. 
No call from Cobra Red Leader. A stack to Sea Cliff 88. Thank you and out. Five five. Mayday. Mayday. After ditch. Brick top blue two here. Going down near mid channel. Give me a fix. One two. Five fighter bomber. Four, yes sir. Five. Hey little friend, let a bomber pass your thunderbolt. You call that junk heap a bomber? That's it. Shooter. Top cylinder shot off. I'm running on a built-in egg beater. Oh, we thought you were dragging your feet. Bandits! Bandits, hey you Thunderbolt! Germans, five o'clock high, see him? Oh, I see them. Get out of here, run! I haven't got enough juice. Steer them around in front of me. Get under our wing. We'll try and cover you. Right. Jan, bring me a wheelbarrow. Come on, let's get out there. Let me talk to you. Easy, Ed. Easy.
me switch you out. You're the luckiest guy I know. You're telling me. Now let's see you fly it out. Okay, come on, get in. We'll give it a go. Not me. Brother, that ship's a wreck. Notify the taxpayers and get me another one. Will you? And I understand. Get all these directives off my desk. Yes, sir. What does Air Delpho mean? Four days to install radio equipment. Take a memo to Air Delpho. Uh, what'll I say, sir? You know what they say? Tell them they gotta do it faster. Here's another one. Cutting our requisition on gun cameras in half. From now on, order twice as many as we need. My men have gotta have equipment. I'm not gonna have the Air Delpho tell me how to run things. Who the blazes is Sergeant Kinsey? I don't know, sir, but... There's been a stream of young ladies in here from Randall, Kemperu, Stratford, and Dorset, all complaining and uh, looking for a Sergeant Kenzie. He must be quite a Don Juan. <laughs> Sounds like the Air Corps. But it can't be any of our men. None of them get past. There's enough to get around that much. Send out an order to all group commanders and see that I'm not bothered with this man Kinsey again. Yes, sir. <clears throat> uh, General Gilbert's here, sir. Send him in. Send him in. Ah, hello, Mel. Sit down. Have a cigar. Oh, thank you, sir. Well, your wing had it kind of hot today, didn't they? Yes, sir. Fourteen loss, nine washouts, twenty major repairs. <laughs> when Fatso Goering puts up three groups to protect the target, that means our bombers are hitting him with their tender. What's the trouble? How'd you know? Well, when there isn't any, you always take a cigar. It's a thing I hate to request, sir. The court-martial of a fighter pilot, Major Harden. Harden on what charge? Repeated violation of combat orders in the face of the enemy. I said this was difficult, sir. Next to Brickley, he has the highest score of planes in the entire command. And I know he's one of your boys. That had nothing to do with the general. If the charge is justified. I'm sorry, sir. I didn't mean to imply favoritism, only his value. Now, what's he done this time? The same as on repeated occasions. Refused to stay with the bombers. In fairness to him, I must say he went down to the deck trying to save one of his men. But afterwards, he didn't rejoin his squadron. He kept on chasing into Germany after the enemy plane. Did he get him? He got three. Two in the air and one on the ground. By strafing the field, he subjected his plane to flak, a cylinder shot off. He had to wash out his plane to bring it in. It's only luck he wasn't lost, too. That gives him, let me see, 16 victories. Makes a court-martial kind of tough, doesn't it? It's because of that, sir. He's a top ace. The new replacements look upon him as an idol, and they follow his example. They've got to be taught in battle the vital necessity of their assigned duties to respect the tactical judgment of the higher command. He's violating your own orders, sir. Yeah. <clears throat> Has a combat film on the 17th come up yet? I'll put Major Harden's on. Come on, Mel. You ready? Yes, sir. Shoot. Mel, it seems to me that you've lost sight of one thing. Harden was with the Flying Tigers in China before he joined the Eagle Squadron with Hamilton, Brickley, and Chappelle. And in China, it was every man on his own and every Jap plane a target regardless. And my own personal feelings after seeing that film would be to recommend him for another cluster on his DFC. If you did that, sir, it would be a reward for violating orders. Yes, you're right, you're right. Of course, by all the rules, I, uh... I ought to court-martial him. The request is withdrawn, sir. Good, good. But you were quite right in making it. Replacement center, Major Casson. Colonel Brickley speaking. Your replacements didn't arrive until 2100. They were there to be sent. I'm not going to bring my men back from missions where they've seen their friends shot down and make them go through dinner looking at empty chairs. From this date on, have them here at 1800. 
The Major was very busy. I bet that paddlefoot's busier now. That chair is a hard seat. That parachute pack is softer. I put you on the spot with Gilbert today. I haven't any excuse. Forget it. The old one's good enough. To you, all Germans have slant eyes. I'd like to be down on the deck there with you, Ed, but as long as the order is stay with the bombers, I'll fly it. Gilbert's slogans. Escort over target will retain auxiliary gas tanks to rendezvous even if attacked. That one, too. Bill, you've always refused to use our friendship with Mike McGreedy and go over Gilbert's head. How long are you going to let him hogtie us with last year's tactics? We got enough groups now to protect the bombers and still go in ahead and pace Goering's fat boys before they get their tails off the ground. Gilbert doesn't think so. Gilbert isn't C.G. McCready is. Gilbert's uncle is on air staff. It's worth a try. You won't do it. You're an army officer plus a gentleman, but I'm a China tramp. I'm going to. No, you won't. That's an order. Yes, sir. Ah, oh, it'll come in time. When we're flying rocking chairs. Oh, they'll feel good. A drink would feel better. Let's make it two. Let's go. If I was flying, we'd have had twice as many. Even more. Keep busy, Wilbur, even though they ain't paying us much, you know. Move around. Yes, sir. Then there was a time I was stationed in Hollywood. Brother, what a town that is. There used to be one dame call for me every Saturday. Did she have a car? A car? Did you ever have a chauffeur open the door for you, my boy? Did you ever have a lovely tall blonde covered with perfume from heaven and entice you into a $14,000 limousine? Did she have a car? What do you think I go with, hitchhikers? Get a load of that, Captain. Always talking about women. If I had an airplane to get around in like he has, I'd have dams all over the continent. But I gotta operate in a Jeep. Makes it tough. Sure. Come on, Dolan, get him up. Hi, Tennessee. Hi. How are the boys taking after that rat race today? Some of them are feeling mighty low, Colonel. Well, the crap game usually helps. Now you're talking. Takes their minds off it. Hey, fellas, get out the good dice. I got 400 bucks burning a hole in my pocket. Where's two? Upstairs. Probably shining his boots. Let's go get him. Yeah, he's always good for months, Faye. I don't understand it. You guys would rather shoot crap than talk about women. Come on, let's root him out. Hey, I'm speaking of dice games. Yeah. There was a little girl down there. At if he doesn't stop talking about women, he's going to wind up married to one. <laughs> They're starting a game downstairs with two dirty little cubes called dice. Ever hear of it? Bust out your flying pig. You guys go on down and play. I want to stay up here with Ann. And what makes you think she want to stay up here with you? Are you coming? Wait till I get my luck on. You better come barefoot. Those boots never helped you make a four yet. Oh, yeah. These are the good luck boots of all time. Oh. You know? You'd believe it if you'd have seen them in that London store. Yeah. A bombed out pile yeah. of rubble, gutted yeah. by fire, windows smashed to splinters. And there they were, the only thing left. Immaculate. Not even singed. Not one speck of dirt. Lucky? Ha! Did he tell it the same? No. Last time he put the dirt first. Yes! Ha! 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 Big old nasty seven. Ha! 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 You better make a combat. You never made a four yet. Tonight's the night. All that says he does. He does. What's that for? Well, as long as you're betting leather, you're faded. Oh, yeah. oh, come oh, on, oh, 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 oh. Let Daddy make his point. Red warning. Red warning. All personnel take immediate cover. <laughs> Sarge? Any calls? Yes, sir. Uh, Lady Woodbine called. What'd she say? She said that she'd meet you tonight at the same place. On the bridge? Yes, sir. Oh, and if it's raining, under the bridge. She doesn't want to get wet. Okay, gas up the Jeep and throw my white tie in the back seat. It's liable to be formal. Uh, look, Wilbur, I'm a little short. You got any money? Oh, all I've got's a dollar. You better ride home for some dough. Yes, I think I'd better. Let one out, will you? Yes, sir. Hurry up. Tillman, Colonel Brickman wants to see you. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have a memo here from Fighter Command. 
Seems there's a sergeant been spending quite a bit of time in the towns of Randall, Stratford, Kentborough, and Dorset, entertaining the ladies, and I don't mean playing cricket. And when General McCready finds him, he'll have him hung. Twice. Can you describe him, sir? We know he's a sergeant. His name's Kinsey. Must be in the infantry. Can't be one of our men. They haven't had any passes off the base. Right. And nobody's going to get off the base. Here, post that. Double restrictions. Fog's lifting, but I don't think he'll get off. No. Is that for man? She sends a love. She says she saw your father, Ed. I'll let the old man talk to Rayro. He's a great guy. I suppose you told her you'd be coming home soon. Right? Yeah. She says four more missions on this tour and you'll be home. Only one more if this lifts today. On this tour. And she knows you've signed up for another one. She never tries to talk me out of it either. You got a good girl, Stu. You're a lucky guy. If only Bricky didn't have that crazy rule against marriage. Yeah, but he has. As long as he's in command, we'll have to stick with it. Maybe another CO wouldn't think it's important, but he does. The mission's been scrubbed. Fan man? This one, gentlemen, is from a young lady in Texas. Blonde hair, big blue eyes, and not that I want to aggravate you, but she has an oil well in her backyard that keeps pumping out filthy, filthy money. Probably begging for my hand in marriage. Don't you know any poor women? I know them, but I avoid them. Hey, fellas, the teletype just came through from General McCready ordering Brickley to come to headquarters. It smells like General Gilbert to me. I don't know, but Brick just left. I have a message from Chief of Staff, sir. It says, new fighter groups 604 and 605 will be assigned to escort duty with 10th Bomber Wing when fully operational, signed Curran. Hi. Oh, hello, Brick. <laughs> Have a cigar. No, I forgot you don't smoke. You know, Brick, we don't see enough of each other. Well, I've been pretty busy. Yeah. You've been flying the missions, Brick. Now, what do you think of the combat policy? Well, I'll make the question official. I respect General Gilbert. He's a perfect combat flyer. And his ideas were okay a year ago, and we didn't have enough planes. But he's out of date on two counts since the last five groups became operational. Belly tanks? The target escort having to hold on. Oh. Staff says we have to have full flying time over target. But what about getting jumped on the way in? We haven't got a plane yet that can beat the Germans with a load of tanks. And the boys that find that out are the ones who've never gotten back to tell about it. The second those fighters jump us, we should drop those tanks and knock some of them out of the air. It doesn't matter where they're knocked out. They just won't be around tomorrow to give us trouble. And, uh, what else? And we've enough groups now to send some of the experienced ones in ahead of each mission. Smash up the airfields. Blow them up on the ground. Pin them down. Yeah. Uh, including your own group? Yes, sir. <laughs> yeah, that's a, that's a hard nut to crack, Brick. You know, statistics show that our losses are four times greater in low altitude operations. Flak, machine guns, rifles, pistols, they even throw pots and pans at us. But the objective is to get the most bombers over the target free of attack. If you believed in it, you could persuade staff. Mm. <coughs> you know, Brick, it seems a long time ago since you fellows came over to me from the Eagle Squadron. It's been a lot of flying time. Yeah. Uh, Brick, can you stand the shock? I've held off as long as I could, but... Now I've got to ask you to give up your group. You're the best man I've got. I wanted to make you a brigadier a year ago, but no, your heart was set on flying. All right. You can go on flying. But I want you to take over one of these new groups, the 604th. Make that a crack outfit, too. I was afraid it was a desk job. Ah, you'd be no good behind a desk. Losing weight, fighting ulcers, fighting the air depot. I, I know what your group means to you. And I'm not going to pull rank. Will you do it? If you want it that way, yes. Good. Now, now, who do you recommend to replace you? Ed Harden. Harden? Uh, I, I don't know. Harden's a lone wolf. Bad record for violating orders. He's a great fighter, mind you, but he's not cut out for organization. He's never had responsibility before. You said you knew how I felt about my group, and I think he's the best man to see it through the tough spots. I know, but they... You've respected my judgment of men in the past, General. All right, kid. If you want it that way, his orders will come through this afternoon. Thanks, Mike. I beg your pardon, sir. General. That... Great Scott, my pill. What are you doing up so late? Waiting for you. Where'd you go, Liverpool? The colonel sent me on a mission, and tonight I completed it. There's a guy down there waiting for you. Probably the girl's father. Here I am, Governor. How many you got? Half a dozen. How old? Cold, I should say about three years. What do you want this time? The soap or the cigarettes? Oh, Clark, the cigarettes? You better take the soap. Good luck. 
Any calls? Yes, Victoria called. The barmaid from Surrey. What'd you tell her? I told her that you were wounded. You're practically a sergeant. Come on, give me a hand here. All right. This batch ought to last me a week. Yeah. Oh, they're nice. Aren't they? Yes, sir. Where's the other one? There it is. I'm going to save this one for Saturday. That's a beauty. Hey, aren't you afraid you'll get caught? By who? The officers? Yes. Look, Wilbur, when the war's over, they're going to be working for me. Oh. And come to think of it, I got a job for you. Oh, thank you. No salary. I'm going to give you a part of the business. Oh, thanks. Well, they make an awful lot of noise when they're fighting. <laughs> or maybe they're hungry. Yeah. This money clip was given me by a dame in Chicago. Empty? At the time, yes. Now it's full of thousand franc notes. What do you carry French dough for? In case I get knocked down on the continent, I'm going to get to Paris. He's got the address of some French dancer. Been carrying it around for two years. Oh, the most beautiful French acrobatic dancer at the Follies Bergere. She does a dance of the little rippling muscles, and I hear she's the most sensational female that ever lived. If I could meet her just once, you guys could have my address book and all the women I ever told you about. This dame probably doesn't exist either. Oh, no. Jack Carter over at the 85th was on his deathbed when he told me about her. He got so excited, he got well again. But, uh... I already had her address. Uh, by the way, what was that address? <laughs> I'm no stupid. Well, I think I'll go down and show men at the village by hey, fall. Hey, Dolan must be drinking alcohol out of the compasses again. He's going around telling everybody that Brickley's being transferred. Oh, <laughs> that's one. It's true. What? Colonel Brickley wants to see you in his office. Here. This is no good, Brick. We've been pretty good at playing ostrich. Lightning had to strike the building sometime. Who swung it, Gilbert? No, McCready. He wants me to break in one of the new outfits, 604th. That makes good army sense. Wreck the highest scoring outfit he's got. Wreck it? Well, who else can they get for the job? You, Colonel. Well, he's out of his mind. I recommended you. I thought you knew me better than that. There's Hamilton and Duke. Count me out, Brick. I don't tick that way. Never have. I can handle a squadron, but I can't run 48 planes in a rat race. You could. You never wanted to. A cute kid lieutenant in Honolulu. You wanted to be a rover boy. Threw up your commission and went to China. That was your meat. Play it high, wide, and handsome. Voluntary missions. Plaster them. Think of nobody but yourself. Fun, sure, I know. We used to do that in the Eagle Squadron. But you've made this war your private three-ring circus, and I've taken the rap for you. Now you can pay me back. Listen, this is my outfit. I want every man in it to have the best fighting chance to come out alive. To keep them on their toes, strict rules, split second timing. Are you going to do it or are you going to go on flying for Ed Harden? Or can't you take it? I'll take it. Thanks. Cute kid, Lieutenant. Oh, you. Come on, you'll be late. Where's your bag? Oh, she's in Peoria. I saw her when he kissed her goodbye. Get a move on it. This is every day we get rid of a colonel. Ah, well, let's get him out of here. We want his office. <laughs> Any man I ever chewed out while I was CEO of this outfit, stand up. <laughs> I'm sorry. Goodbye and good luck. Come on, Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Adam, pull the rip <laughs> Steady on your feet, Ed. You never saw the day I wasn't, and don't get married. <laughs> Transfer for the group fund. <laughs> Take him away, Corporal. Sure and get him on straight, Wilbur. Colonel Harden's gonna be mighty proud of those for a little while. I keep running the needle through my finger. That's good practice for when you're sewing on your own stripes. And you will be pretty soon because I'm in there punching for you. Careful, Wilbur. Don't eat the coat. Oh, I wasn't going to. Listen, get busy. Move around. Don't let him catch you sitting down like this all the time. Come on. Move. Yes, sir. At ease. Uh, thank you, sir. Medical report. A4 on those major repairs. Here's your blouse, sir. Just finished sewing on the new leaves. Kept sticking my finger with that needle. I'm sorry, though. I'll get you a real pretty Red Cross nurse. I'd rather have a thimble. Do you know I'd do anything for you? Well, find that Sergeant Kinsey for me. I'm still getting complaints on him from headquarters. The way that guy gets around, I think he must be a paratrooper. Well, you find him, Sergeant. Yes, sir. Anything else, Major? Colonel Dolan. You haven't got the coat on yet. Thanks, Sergeant. You're welcome, Colonel. 
Here's a letter from headquarters confirming your command. This was sent before Brick asked me. He knew he could count on you. Here's a reminder to write letters of condolence. Brickley always write those himself? Always. He never could remember if there was an E in courageously. I don't think I'm going to fit this desk. Well, you will, Colonel. Keep on their toes. Strict rules. Split second time. Tomorrow's mission, Colonel. 2,000 weather reports clearing. Berlin. First strike on Berlin. We escort over target. Gary will have his Abbeville boys up for this one. There's still no permission to drop tanks. At least we'll establish a new high in losses. When I put the coat on him, he threw his chest out so far, he almost knocked me over. He was that happy. So I told him. I said, Wilbur did all the sewing. Then I put the pressure on him for your stripes. Oh, gee. Do you really think I'll get it? You stick with me, you know you're gonna get it. Where's that no marriage sign? It was up there this morning. It was there this afternoon. Who took it? Uh, Captain Hamilton tonight. Captain Hamilton tonight. <laughs> and when I return, you will find me a changed man. Yeah. A man you will admire. And able to make a four at the flip of the wrist to support my lovely bride. Yeah. Yeah. We've been waiting for you. To the group commander, our beautiful big wheel. Yeah. We can really celebrate. Now, uh, Cable Dan, one more mission, then home to be married. You'll still be best man by proxy. To Mrs. Hamilton. Mrs. Yeah. Sorry, I can't drink to that. <laughs> Always a guy for a gag. This is no gag. You don't mean a crazy idea of bricks. Sure, we lived up to it while he was here, but you're in command now. It isn't crazy. Every rule he ever made had only one thought, to save lives. And the outfit is stuck with it? We're also stuck with the highest score in the group and the least dead men. Brick wanted one kind of man for this outfit. A thought flying. Lived for nothing but flying. He said from the first that when a man has the responsibility of a wife and children, he finds he can't gamble his life with that same split-second aggressiveness. And that can make the difference. One less pilot. You've broken plenty of rules. You're alive. Sure, I've broken General Gilbert's orders, but I've never crossed up one of Brickley's in all the years we've flown together. You're not Brick. It's not your rule. He asked me to take over in his place to see this outfit through. I'm going to. Corporal, take that sign back to the hut. Yes, sir. Transfer from this group first. I can do better than that. I can get me a nice cushy training job in the States with a home and wife and kids. Yes, you can, Stu. A lot of men have gone home after their first tour. You put in two. Until you make that decision official, you will move up to my place as squadron commander. Captain Chappelle I'll will... make that official now. In that case, fly your regular position for your last mission. Is your you? wingman? Yes. Captain Chappelle, after tomorrow's mission, you will take over as squadron commander. Atkins takes Chappelle's place as flight leader. You may want to start logging sack time. Weather reports clearing. Tomorrow's mission will be target cover on the first bombing of Berlin. Berlin! 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 They're at it again. Throw them a bloater and shut them up. Oh, the cat? Yeah. All right. We're running out of fishes. That's better than running out of cats. <laughs> Let one out the first thing in the morning. I gotta be in Dorset. What's up? Sybil. I'm in trouble with her mother. What happened? She's hard of hearing and kept tuning in on our conversation, so I stole her hearing aid. The big beef going on at the house, I gotta get it back in the morning. Say something, see if I can hear you. What can I say? Anything. Good night. Good night. She didn't hear anything with this. All pilots' attention. All pilots' attention. All pilots attention. Report, Report, to to Report to briefing room. Report to briefing room. All pilots' attention. Report, Report, to, Report to briefing room. room. All pilots' attention. Report to briefing room. 
Report to briefing room. What are you doing? Man, if I have to get up this early, there ain't no birds gonna be sleeping. The job for today is to fly target support over Berlin. They're making a test strike with 30 B-17s. When you fly over the flak emplacements on the Dutch coast, have your squadron at 25,000 feet, Harris. I'll be at 24. Ward, you'll be at 23. We'll fly a V by squadrons. Low squadron up sun. Takeoff time, 0900. Dutch coast south of Breskin, 1010. Rendezvous with the heavies at Belzig, 11.15. Break escort, 1,200. Major. We've learned that Gary has moved three groups of the Abbeville boys to the Spando and the Charlottenburg fields. They'll think the strike's on Magdeburg until you make the rendezvous turn. Then you can expect them to put up everything they have against you. All through the General McCready, sir. The most logical area of interception will be here, from the south. Colonel Harden speaking. This is your first one in command. Good luck, Colonel. Thank you, sir, but I didn't call for that. I've got a great favor to ask. Remember, Brick talked to you about dropping those belly tanks, but he never had a chance to prove it? Well, now we've got to. I still can't do it, Ed. Staff said it's not policy. We'd make it policy if you'd give us a fighting chance. Putting me on the spot with Air Force, eh? Right now, I'd put you on the spot with anybody. I gotta face those men. I gotta take them clear to Berlin. They've never done it before. If they're attacked, and they will be, and they can't drop those tanks, half of them will never get there. I can't take them there. It's not only staff, Ed, this is team play. I'll have Bomber Command on my neck. I remember when you had a pretty tough neck, Mike. All right. All right, Ed. One mission. I'll cut a tape on it. But you'd better find some Germans. I'll get a big fat one for you, sir. And thank you. Good luck. Hold it, hold it. General McCready just told me he's sending through an order. If we're attacked on this mission, we're to drop tanks. He wished us good luck. That's it. Oh, almighty God, the supreme governor of all things, whose power no creature can resist. Amen. 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 Here's your friend. Back again? We told you to get rid of it. I took him 40 miles cross country and dropped him off at a fish store. Take it 50 miles, but get it off of this field. Take it to London. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. What are we waiting for? Still using runway 26 for takeoff. Haystack to yardstick. Take off runway 26, runway 26. Wind from the west, 10 degrees. Taxi out when ready. Over and out. Roger. Here, hold us till I get back.
fighters and bombers rendezvous. Third group to position between Hanover and Magdeburg. Third fighter group now 10 minutes from rendezvous point, sir. On time. This is Harden checking RT. Okay, Stu? Hamilton. Roger. Chappelle. One, two, three, four. This is Harden. German fighters, two o'clock high. They're ready to drop belly tanks if they jump us. Staffel 263. Höchstauftrieb. If we could only see their kisses now. Drop tanks. <laughs> Hold it, Fritzy. Papa's got something for you. That's it.
time. Hang on, Colonel. This is going to be a rough takeoff. I hope Dolan can find that cat. I'd like to express my gratitude. First returning groups now in Baker 3, sir. Over the channel. General? Thank you. Third fighter group. Berlin mission. 39 enemy planes destroyed. Only one lost. You reckon? Uh, uh, yes, staff will be happy. Have a copy of this frame, then send it to Colonel Brickley. Call it when our fighters drop their tanks. No, 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 no better still. Call it... Strictly his tactics. He like that. Harden said they'd mop up. Colonel Harden seems to be reforming. Reform? Yeah, he's reformed. Yes, now it's his other two dizzy renegades, Hamilton and Chappelle. I'm glad they saved him, though. I need that man. You know, Duncan, I think those boys have given the Air Force some new fighter tactics. Belly tanks. Pretty soon you're going to have to write smaller numbers. Or we're going to need a bigger blackboard. Or the Germans are going to need more planes. <laughs> well, look who's back again. Hooray! Hooray! Welcome home. Dolan, you're a genius. He said not to kill oh, us. A lucky cat. Hey, you ought to park this cat on the parachutes every morning, Sergeant. How did you ever find it again? I just said to myself, if I was a black cat, where would I go? So I went there and there he was. <laughs> you did take it off the field. Oh, yes, sir. You're sure it's the same one? Smell him. <laughs> Who says black cats aren't lucky? A new record, the colonel rescued, and what did we find out, fellas? Where does Paulette live? 20 Duke, you never should have told Harden over the RT. Uh, he's got to get the Paris to call her, and when he does, I'll answer. Yeah. <laughs> well, here comes the blushing bridegroom. Always the bridegroom. Well, you ran the show great today, Tennessee. Thanks. The boys did get sort of hot without those tanks. I sure felt like a lost grouse without you, though. From headquarters, sir. Maybe she has a sister you can kiss for me. Cut! Huh? At I have a message from headquarters. Effective immediately, group commanders will caution pilots of the obvious danger of attempting to rescue personnel by landings on the continent. This message should not be construed so as to minimize Captain Hamilton's gallantry in his rescue. Pilots must be impressed with the dangers involved and the overwhelming odds against success in such an attempt. The probability of the loss of two aircraft and two pilots instead of only one will be brought forcibly to each pilot's attention. Make them understand it's a million to one chance, signed Gilbert, wing commander. Sorry about this. I thought you'd raid a DSC for your last mission. Thanks. At least I had the pleasure of breaking Gilbert's pet rule once. So long, Duke. Have fun. Ed, I'll work out with you. So long, See you. Oh, Thanks again for the ride today. Okay. I'm sorry we couldn't work this out. Or can we, Stu? I'm a stubborn guy. That makes two of us. Give my best to Anne. Any message for your father? Yeah. Tell him I'm just as tough on my men as Brickley was. I'll tell him one of them had enough tours of Europe and wanted to get married. See you in the States. It's a deal, Stu. Let's go. Gallagher and Culver, Lieutenants Miller, Dorr, Perry, Rujeski, Carlin, and Musetti. Total for March, 147 enemy planes destroyed. Eight probables, 43 damage. And the groups made a fine record. 
Colonel, two more, and you'll be top scoring ace. I'm looking forward to that. Thanks. Sanford, I'm going to ask you to write these letters to the boy's parents. I find I'm not prickly. Good night. Good night, Colonel. Honey, child, stay as sweet as you are. These shows are getting rugged. Funny how you can miss one crummy pair of boots. Yeah. Ah, the lucky dog. What it must feel like being home. Wake up in the morning with a lovely wife, nothing to do but relax. I could turn into a fat slob in a week. Colonel, sir. Yeah, come on in. I'm Lieutenant Kirk, sir, one of the new replacements from OTU. Yes, I know. You know Captain Chappelle, Lieutenant Atkins? Yes, sir. Hello, Captain Kirk. Lieutenant. Hi. Would you mind answering your question, sir? Is it about the girl you left behind? No, sir. It's about flying. Then you better ask the colonel. They're just kidding, Kirk. Sit down. Thank you. This afternoon, you said when you're trying for a deflection shot, you don't so much watch the enemy plane. Well, what do you watch, sir? I watch his exhaust for smoke. When he cuts his engine, he's just telegraphing his next move. Oh, yes, sir. Then I should put on my brakes. Yeah, but if you do overshoot, don't be brave. Just push everything over in the corner and go looking for an empty Anka sky. Yes, sir. Nervous about tomorrow? Tell you the truth, I'm scared. We all get it every day. Well, maybe I'll get used to it. I'll sure try. I'll tell you what, Lieutenant, we'll work this thing out together. Tomorrow you fly my wing. Fly your wing? Colonel, a wingman's supposed to protect his partner. You'll do better than you think. That's an order. Yes, sir. Better get some sack time. Thank you, sir. Good night. Good night. Were you ever that young? I was born an old man. Ship, sir. Remind me to write and thank the taxpayers. What's he doing over there? He's out here an hour before sunup. I think he's checked everything but the paint job. Like a kid with a new toy. Well, he'll be all right. Hurry up, holding up the war. And thanks for everything if I don't come back. What do you mean if? This outfit don't think that way. And I'll have a paintbrush waiting to put a lot of swastikas on when you get back. There might be a Jerry at his field with the same idea. Forget it. I've been thinking over a new fighter tactic, a low-level mission. Go in ahead of the bombers and plaster the airfields. Get the Jerry planes on the ground. Keep them from getting up to attack our bomber formations. I, uh, I talked it over with Ed, and he, uh, he suggested... Ed? You mean Colonel Harden? Yeah. Yes, uh, Ed felt that it would be a tactical advantage to go down on the deck. Catch them napping. General, you know my feeling about low-level missions. Our losses are higher, and it leaves fewer fighters in the air for bomber support. Yes, but we've got more planes now, and we should take advantage of tactical surprise. They won't be expecting a wave of fighters to come in ahead of the bombers. With your permission, General, I would like to prepare some facts and figures and give you a report to substantiate my opinion on this type of operation. No, 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 this war's moving too fast. We've got to listen to the new tactics of our younger officers. Harden's very keen about this. I must confess I'm 99% sold on it myself. Well, anyway, I'll, uh, I'll think the matter over and let you know. That's all, Gil, thanks. Haystack to yardstick, haystack to yardstick. Yardstick to haystack, go ahead. Use runway three, wind velocity, 10 miles. Roger.
Looks like they got a piece of your tail. Yes, they did, sir. Lieutenant Fox was right beside me. They shot his wing off. I saw you knock down that 109. You got your first kill, Shorty. You nailed him beautifully. I feel kind of funny, sir. I think I'm going to be sick. Hey, Sarge. Get him up there. Give him a blast of that oxygen. You guys give him a hand, will you? And he's got a Messerschmitt that's confirmed by me. You can put it on there now. Yes, sir. It's yours. All yours. Four more and you'll be an ace. Can't they make it bigger? Seventeen more and you'll be even with Colonel Harden. I think I'm gonna be sick again. Hey, Mike, some more oxygen. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Shorty, you were magnificent today. Better drink to your victory. I'd like root beer. A little warm beer won't hurt you. To your victory. We're gonna make a man out of you yet. Danger! Hey, come on around here, man. I thought you'd want to know something we've been waiting a long time to hear. You can read the text after I'm through. You notice a lot of those new German squadron markings on the way in today. Our target and withdrawal escorts ran into the rest of them, plus the old ones. 202 over target, 244 on withdrawal. We lost 59 bombers. Intelligence reports new German fighter concentrations at Flagstaff and Grisha airfields outside Berlin. Tomorrow morning, we're assigned to go in at 30,000 feet, an hour ahead of those bombers, and then go down and give the fields a good going over. The 18,000 foot rule is off. Hey, now we can go down and see whether they're blondes or brunettes. Oh, General Gilbert sign. Hey, let's give it to them. Oh, General Gilbert. Oh, General Gilbert. We're leaving you high and dry to hit the deck. Pan shut. Well, sounds like General Gilbert's on the pan. Such disrespect. What's the matter, Stu? Honeymoon too tough for you? Must have got a good look at his mother-in-law. Where did you go on your honeymoon? Niagara Falls. Did you take your wife with you? Stu, Stu, how are you? Never better. Did you see my old man? He told me to tell you you still owe him 80 bucks. He's not going to get it either. What brings you back? I got to look at that training school. Well, that's not hard to take. The honeymoon is over. I never put through those transfer papers. From what I heard outside, I got back just in time. Got room for me in that rat race tomorrow? Room for you? We're gonna need every old hand we've got. Hey, hey, how about a drink for this man? He saw a training Let's school. Let's drink to tomorrow. Ah, the boots. Things are beginning to look normal again. Yeah. Well, sack it up, Blue Eyes. We're cutting grass tomorrow. Night, fellas. Night, night. Good night. Thanks for saving it until we got up here. You married still? Yeah. Well, aren't you going to congratulate me? Yes, I do. As the best there is, you both deserve every happiness. We have it. But you signed up for another tour. Yeah, she... She understood I couldn't stay out. Sorry, Stu. Tomorrow morning, I'll have to have your written request for transfer to another group. You wouldn't make me go through that. You left me no choice. I could have lied to you. You're not the type to do that. I left my wife, my marriage, a chance for a home, came back. What more proof do you want of my loyalty? There are over a hundred men in this group. They're all loyal and they all carry out orders. But Ed, I told you the rest. I'll ask you just one question. If Brick was still in command, would you have done this to him? Okay, Ed. I'll have it on your desk in the morning. Thanks. What about tomorrow's mission? You give me that break? I can't do it. I've flown your wing a lot of years. Been waiting a long time for this order to hit the deck. It isn't much to ask. All right, still. Let's take this out in the Germans. I got some shoe shiners to do.
amerikanische Gruppe nahe sich Griechburg. Keine Bombe gemeldet. Geschwader der Indianer immer noch 8000 Meter hoch. Kurs 87 Grad. 96 Kilometer südlich von Berlin. You wanted it. I'm right behind you. Time for the jackpot. Good luck.
to have kept you waiting, sir. I had expected to find you in your office at this hour of the morning. But then I shouldn't be surprised as there are several things I had expected of you. What was that, sir? I had expected, Colonel, that you knew enough of Army procedure to know that everything presented to the higher echelon must go through channels. I'm well aware of that, General. You didn't seem to be aware of it when you went over my head to General McCready about dropping belly tanks. There was no time, sir. That had to be a snap decision. I want to remind you, Colonel, that I am your immediate superior in this fighter wing. In the future, everything you have to say to headquarters will be sent through me. Do I make myself clear? Yes, sir. You seem to have been very successful in furthering your own ideas. First, the dropping of the belly tanks, and now low-level missions. That order came from staff, sir. Yesterday, following out your tactics, you became the top-ranking ace. 22 victories. Very commendable. But that type of flying also caused the death of Captain Hamilton. Now, perhaps you can understand why I've always opposed low-level missions. The loss ratio is always four times higher. Stay with the barmans. Keep their belly tanks. A lot of stupid slogans you made up while you were flying your big fat desks. You ought to be made to get out, get up into the sky, get into the rat race, have someone banging away at your tail, shooting you to pieces. Then we'd see how your rules would hold. You'd leave the bombers and you'd drop the tanks and maybe you'd get some sense through your paperwork heads. This war is passing you by. We're up to here with channels and red tape. Now get out of this office! Are you aware of what you're saying? Get out. You're a case of combat fatigue, Harden. And another thing. What about those stripes? You're gonna get them. But you promised them to me for my birthday. That's when you're gonna get them. Hey, but my birthday was last week. Why didn't you tell me? Why didn't you write it down? But I don't have to write it down, sir. I know when it is. Well, keep me posted on the next one. Go in and clean up the bar. Yes, sir. All right, Dolan, fight it, Commander. I gotta see General McGrady. You look worried, sir. There's trouble. General Gilbert? Yeah, it looks like I really did it this time. Wish me luck, Dolan. Hey, Sergeant. I got your picture in the magazine. All the guys are talking about it. Oh, I got scrapbooks loaded with these things. I'll take this one. Now, where's Sweeney? Well, he's an intelligence interviewing women. Women? That's my racket. I'll go in and give him a hand. I'm sorry about Hamilton's death. I'm going to miss him, too. Maybe almost as much as you are. I know, sir. I can't lose any more of you, Ed. Big things are coming up. Important things. I need old hands here at headquarters. I need the old gang from the Eagle Squadron. Rick's turning over his group and reporting tomorrow. I want you to come up with him. Did General Gilbert put me on report, sir? Combat fatigue? No, no, no. He, he told me about it, said he was sorry, and he said he'd been wrong. But you believe it? No, 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 no. It isn't that. It's just... Well, I've begun to think that my way of fighting this war hasn't been right. I've always hated pulling men down out of the skies and putting them behind the desk. But it's what I should have done. Hamilton's death proved that to me. Now, when can you report, Ed? I'd like to finish this tour, sir. How many more missions? Ten. Ten? You let Hamilton go just one more. If I'd have been in his shoes, I'd have asked the same thing. I am now. You said a lot of things were coming up. I watched those bomber concentrations over Normandy the last few weeks. I've flown a long time waiting for D-Day. I wouldn't like to quit before I'd done some paying off for Stu. You know, I could order you to report to headquarters. I suppose you'd obey orders. Yes, sir. But these oak leaves are temporary. I'd request to be reduced to my permanent rank of captain so I could keep on flying. Please, sir. All right, Ed. <laughs> Go on back to your group. Thank you, sir. But when your tour is over, you report here. Yes, sir. What's going on out there? Look at this picture. And that is Sergeant Kinsey. That's it. Hey, Sergeant. Hi, please. So, so you are Sergeant Kinsey. Eh? That's your right, Sergeant. Ladies, quiet. I promise you this man will be punished. What about my daughter's cat? I didn't take Sybil's cat. What? I didn't take Sybil's cat. Over, Roger. Roger? Oh, he was at our house, too. Hey, quiet, please, ladies. Kinsey, whatever your name is, consider yourself under arrest. And please. 
take this character out of here. Sometimes I wish I was a sergeant. If I was a general, this would have never happened to me. Oh, I don't know. Black cats have always been bad luck. No, they aren't. One day I was out riding in a car with my mother-in-law, and a black cat ran in front of the car. I jammed on the brakes. Boing! The old lady hasn't talked to me since. That's good luck, ain't it? This way, sir. Am I getting out, sir? In time, I imagine you will. We were cleaning up your room and found these. I think you've been dealing in the black market. Enjoy them, Dolan. Major, General McCready's on the phone. I came to thank you, Dolan. You always said I'd get it, and I got it. But that ain't gonna do you any good because the cat racket is dead. Sergeant. Yes, sir. Get one of those cats. Take it to Sybil's mother with General McCready's compliment. Yes, sir. Soldier, hand me a tame one. Yes, sir. Sorry that you don't have to salute me when you're in jail. All right, now look, get busy. Keep moving around. Don't let them catch you standing still. Come on, pussy, we're going to town. My congressman will hear about this. Do you think this is it? I hope so. My flying time's running out. Get everybody into the briefing room right away, will you? Yes, sir. All leave to be canceled. All pilots on leave to be recalled at once. All personnel will wear sidearms. All guards double. No one is to leave or enter the field. There is to be no communication with the outside. Strict radio silence will be maintained. All planes will be fully armed with 50 caliber and rockets. In addition, A squadron will be armed with napalm bombs. B squadron with fragmentative 260s. C squadron, first section, with frag 500s. Second section with phosphorus 500s. All planes will be ready for pre-dawn takeoff at 0300 tomorrow. Is this a big show we've been waiting for, Colonel? Could be. Let's go. Dear Anne, your letter has given me the courage to write about Stu. I followed him down. The last thing he said on the RT was to tell you that he was thinking of you. Your move. Easy, Jacobs. Don't flip your lip. Don't tell me he's going with us. Why not? We're going to do everything we can get in the air. Black leader. Black leader. That's no black leader. It works. No word. Clear as a bell. Yeah. We used to hold corn at night back in Tennessee. I didn't hold corn, but it was a night just like this. Southeast, shallows here. Naval bombardment raging beachhead now. Division 14, Division 14. Landing craft still a quarter mile off Omaha. Radio silence broken at 0611. Sir, they're hitting the beaches. It's the invasion. D-Day, sir.
Take a look down there. The invasion's really on. Look at that beach. Looks like Coney Island on a Sunday. Cobra leader. Cobra leader. Beagle ground control calling. Cobra leader to Beagle. Go ahead. We're on Omaha Beach. We'll control you from here. Attack Baville. The village Baville. L-24 your map. Infantry and houses. Tiger tanks. Two block houses above village to east. Try to knock them out. Holding up our troops at the head of this valley. Over. Over, leader. L-24 and block houses. Roger. No hand stuff for the outfoots, are you? Ich will den Befehl übernehmen. Beagle to Cobra leader. Correction, correction. Take sector 17, 10 miles behind coastline. Patrol St. Clair and Alan Road. Cobra leader to Beagle. You're a different voice. The other operator was wounded. I've taken over. What do they call the Brooklyn Dodges? What? I don't understand you. I'll say you don't. Hey, Duke. Those squares ought to buy a ticket to Abbott's Field. Yeah. Arm your bonds. Plaster it. behind beach. Attack all reinforcements they're bringing up. Railroads, troops, road convoys. Sector five, one to three miles. Roger. Cobra leader to squadrons, select your targets and let's go. No picnic ground.
us. to be a burst of flak. No German plane would ever have got him. But you didn't actually see him crash. No, sir. Some more bounced me. I never got another look. You, Tennessee? No, sir. None of us. Was his plane spinning? No, sir. Just heading down. Slow spiral. I see. He's alive. I gave him Paulette's address in Paris. 29 Rue de Rivoli. He'll get there. Sir, your temporary order is putting you in command of the group. And these are my orders. Fly low, strike hard, and blast a hole for those ground boys to get through. I got a date to be in Paris before Harden. Well, come on, what are we waiting for? brilliant page of history was written thanks to the wisdom of the Mike McCready's, to the inspiration of the Bill Brickley's, to the laughter of the Duke Chappelle's, to the eagerness of the Shorty Kirk's, to the youth of the Tennessee Atkins, to the loyalty of the Stuart Hamilton's, and to the courage and the daring of the Ed Hardin's, who streaked across the skies to make possible the victory below.